Hello, I'm Emma Cunningham. I'm a clinical academic working half my time in Queen's as a researcher and half my time in the Belfast Trust as a consultant geriatrician. So in terms of the tools that we can use to identify a delirium, they really, as you might imagine, build on the core features that we've mentioned. And when it comes to delirium, so the definition of delirium is it's acute, that it's acute, the person has an altered level of consciousness, they have an altered attention, and that you need to start thinking about an underlying cause. So the tools that we have reflect this. Um, but even when you, and the, the tools have been brought in because it's quite difficult. You know, those things sound straightforward. Is the person acutely different than yesterday? That sounds straightforward. But actually when you go see someone and you think, they're maybe a wee bit sleepy, but they've just woken up. Or they're a bit annoyed, but they've just had an operation. They're a bit sore, that's fair enough. It can be quite difficult to judge these things. Um, so that's when the objective scores are particularly helpful. Or they're also helpful when someone is being assessed by consecutive people and consecutive shifts, because then if you can be as objective as possible, that gives the person coming after you information. And for example, when it comes to consciousness, try where possible to use an objective tool. So the Glasgow Coma Scale, for example, the Modified Rich in Ag Agitation and Sedation Scale is a useful one, though it tends to be more used in research. Or even the likes of the AVPU score on the news chart, you know, so is someone alert? Are they responsive to voice? Are they responsive to pain? Are they unresponsive? That's pretty that's pretty oversimplified, but use anything at all objective that you can use is helpful. Um, same for attention. So the tests we use tend to use for attention. So in the 4AT, it's months of the year backwards, for example. And if you remember that that's scored, some people, the tests for attention are testing more than just attention. It's hard to get a test of pure attention. Something like months of the year backwards, someone who has a dementia might struggle with that or days of the week backwards or whatever other kind of thing you want to choose. You know, but someone with dementia, even trying their best and attending to you as best they can, might still struggle with that. And that's why the 4AT is scored the way it is. Because if someone um, tries but can't manage it, then they get a one. If someone manages perfectly, they get a zero. But you only get a two if you can't really engage enough to do it. Do you know? So the, the screening tools are trying to distinguish the people who have cognitive impairment at baseline and who aren't acutely different from the people who are acutely different. So try and use scores of some description um, as objective measures wherever possible. Um, and that can support you in your decision making, so that can help you decide, is this person different than yesterday? And try not to make allowances for them. Obviously, we always want to be, we do want to make allowances for patients and be compassionate, be understanding, be empathetic. But in the case of assessing people for delirium, be objective. Are they different or not? It doesn't matter all the reasons why they might be different, that's fair enough, but are they different or not? That's how you score it. And then, obviously, you get to the important, arguably the most important bit, which is why are they delirious? So that's great to identify someone as having delirium. It helps you explain things to their families. It helps you explain things to them. It helps you um, communicate with colleagues. But the work then begins. It's not enough to say this person's delirious, my job is done. If this person is delirious, my job is starting. Why are they delirious? The vulnerabilities, for example, age or cognitive impairment are usually fairly easily identified and you can't do much about those. Um, but it's the potential precipitants, those insults that might have, those unlikely overlapping insults that have precipitated the delirium that you can do something about is what you need to start thinking about then. And that's the whole reason really for identifying someone as having a delirium.